So in one of my previous videos, I talked about Ableton's amazing audio to MIDI feature, and I use it all the time for coming up with ideas. But another feature that's really closely related to that is the slice to MIDI, where Ableton can take an audio file and automatically slice it to a new MIDI track. And this works so, so well. I use it all the time. So I thought in this video, I'd take you through some tips and some ways in which I use it. So I'm back again with another one of my quick tips. And today's one is all about Ableton's slice to MIDI feature, taking an audio file and slicing it to a MIDI channel. Now I've talked about the audio to MIDI before because it's a great way of coming up with ideas. I'll link to the video up there and in the description below. But this one is all about the slice to MIDI feature, which I use all the time. I've not talked about it on this channel before, but I did do it in a live stream and I got a few questions about it. So I thought I'd put together a quick video of a few different tips and tricks I use for this amazing feature. Right, so let's get into using this amazing feature. And just to demo this, I've got a very simple beat, just a simple kick and a couple of tops loops. Now this project is at 124 BPM, which is the BPM that I usually produce at. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be bringing in a piano sample. Now this piano sample is actually a hip hop or an R&B kind of sample. So it's a lot, lot slower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drag this straight into Ableton. And if I solo it, we can hear how it sounds. Now, obviously this is speeding it up quite a bit. We can see from the actual sample name that it's actually 86 BPM. So it's actually, it's actually speeding it up quite a bit. And we get this kind of stuttering kind of, not great effect on this audio. So it's not actually sounding too good. Now we can jump in here and maybe start playing around with the warping algorithm to try and make it sound a little bit better. So it's still not sounding that good. No matter what warping algorithm that we use, it's still not sounding great. And it's because we're trying to speed it up way too much. And those kind of held piano notes really don't help us much. So let's have a look at what slicing to MIDI can do. Now you can right click on any audio file and go to slice to MIDI track and it gives you a whole load of different options. Now the first option is how Ableton is gonna slice up this audio track. Now the default is transient and transients are these tiny little gray lines that appear within the clip of your audio file. This is where Ableton has gone through your audio file, looked at kind of all the waveform and looked to see where all the peaks are. So where the peaks are is usually where something is happening. Now these transients are all done automatically. So you don't have much control over those. So you can see here where there's a piano note, we can you see there's three different transients, but there's only one single piano notes. So slicing it up by transient probably isn't gonna work for us. Now you also have options in here to slice it by bar or by fraction of a note. And basically what this will do is it'll actually cut it up. It will slice it up in even amounts based on the timing that you select within here. But this is not the option that I use most. The option that I use most is slicing it by warp marker. Now, before we actually do this, we need to go into the clip and actually set these warp markers first. So what I can actually do is put warp markers in here on the notes that I wanna slice up. So say for example, at the start here, we have a warp marker in at the very start on the very first note. What I can actually do is put a warp marker on every single note that I wanna create a slice for. So say for example, I can see here that this is definitely a piano note. So I can double click on this transient and create a brand new warp marker. And then I'll do another one here and another one here, and maybe another one here, here, and here. And I can keep going through my clip, creating warp markers on every single note or every single hit or every single transient that I want to become a slice. So it's your own manual way of doing it. So you can ensure that you're only getting the notes in there that you want to be as slices. So we can now see all the warp markers that I put in there. And these are all the warp markers that I wanna turn into slices. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click on this audio clip, go to slice to new MIDI track, 
and I'm actually going to select wart marker and I'll click OK. So this has done a number of different things now. This has created a brand new MIDI track. It's loaded a drum rack into there. And what it's done is it's taken all of those slices and put those slices into the drum rack. So each individual pad on here is a different slice from that audio loop. But not only that, it's also put the MIDI notes in here as well. So we've got the same timing that we had from the original clip. So if I solo this track, it will sound the same as the audio sample that we just loaded in. You can see it going through and playing those slices as it goes. So let's do a side by side comparison between the original audio and the sliced audio. So these both sound quite similar. There's no real improvement. So why are we actually slicing it to MIDI if we're not improving it? Well, I've actually got a little trick up my sleeve that I tend to use when I'm speeding up a piano sample or some kind of melody like this using this kind of slice to MIDI method. Now we have all the different slices down here that are actually playing from this drum rack. So if I click and open one of these up, we can actually see this is the individual slice. So if I play this back, we can hear that it's playing back very similar to the original audio. That's because they're both being warped. You can see here that this is being warped. Now, what we can do is we can actually turn the warping off for every single one of these slices. Now, if you did this with the audio file, then obviously it would be playing it back slower. But because we have this MIDI in here, we're actually going to get the same tempo, the same order of the notes, but each individual slice, we can actually, we can actually turn the warping off. So it's hard to explain, but let me show you the difference between having warping on and warping off. And now I'll turn warping off for this first sample. So you can hear we, have, we don't have any of that kind of fluctuation we had before. And because the original slice is longer than we actually have it in here, because we're actually speeding up, remember, so we're actually not playing it for as long as the original sample would be playing, then we're not actually going to run out of sample when it gets to the end. So what I need to do now is I need to go, I need to go through each one of these slices and turn warping off. There isn't really a quick way of doing this. So it's just a case of going through each individual slice and turning warp off. Now this won't work for every single sample, especially if you're taking a fast sample and then slowing it down. It just won't work in that way because you're going to run out of slice. You're going to run out of sample that you're using. But when you're speeding a sample up like this, you actually have more room to play with, which works really well when you're trying to create an effect like this. So I now have the warping turned off for all of these individual slices. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play back the original audio sample and then the new unwarped one. So as you can see, it's a massive, massive improvement because we're actually playing those slices back at their original tempo, but we're actually playing their order at the new tempo, the 124 BPM, we're actually getting this kind of nicer effect out of it. So it's really just an alternative way if that warping isn't working great on your original audio sample. Now, I just want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of this video. And the sponsor is... Well, me, because it's the course that I have produced. Now, if you're liking the tips and tricks and tutorials on this channel, then you might be interested in this course because it's all about learning Ableton. Now, if you don't know anything about music production and you're a bit scared off by some of the courses that are out there, then this might be the one for you because I go from scratch and only tell you the features that you need to know. Now, this course is all about making DJ edits, mashups, bootlegs and remixes, and it takes you through learning each individual bit as you go along. So you're 
always producing something after every single chapter. So you're only learning the skills that you need to just for that chapter, which makes it really easy to kind of follow along with. Now, I've had some amazing reviews and some amazing comments come back about it. And in fact, it's the highest rated music production course on Udemy, which I'm so, so proud about. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, I'm going to put a link up there and in the description below. So definitely check that course out. So that's definitely one of my favorite tips when it comes to slice to MIDI, but I've also got a few up my sleeve that I tend to use all the time. Now with this first example, we were using the MIDI notes that were given to us from the auto slicing. But say for example, you don't wanna use the MIDI notes, you wanna be able to play those slices from your MIDI keyboard. Now, when it comes to automatically slicing them that Ableton does, it will start at C1. So it will map all these samples to C1. So if I open up the IO here, we can see that the very first slice is mapped to C1 on your keyboard, which is quite low down on the keyboard. So it can be a bit of a pain when you're playing everything else around about C3. Generally, when you're kind of composing stuff within Ableton, you'll be working around C3. So going down two octaves just to play these slices can be a bit annoying but I've actually got a very very quick hack and a way around that now obviously you can go through these slices and actually assign them to different notes if you want to so you could actually assign this to c3 and upwards but there's actually a much much quicker way of doing it what I can do is I can actually go into my MIDI effects and then I can go to the pitch device here and put it before the drum rack. And then what I'll do is I'll take the pitch down by minus 24 semitones. So basically what this will do is it will pitch any note that I play into it as minus 24 semitones or otherwise known as down two octaves. So if I play a C3, then it will come into this drum rack as a C1. Just a really quick fix to be able to play those notes at a higher octave if that's kind of where you're playing everything else. Now for this final tip, I want to use a different audio sample. So I got rid of that original audio sample and the slice to MIDI track. And I'm going to head back over to splice again, where I found this really interesting ARP sound. So let's get this into the project. And let's hear how it sounds all together. Now I really like the sound of that, but I really, it just sounds very, very straight to me. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that every single note is on the grid. It's very, very straight. But what if I want to give it some kind of swing? A lot of my tracks have swing to it. Now you can't really do that with audio samples, but you can do it with MIDI. You can apply grooves. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to slice this to MIDI and apply a groove to it. Now, if I double click on this audio sample here, we can actually see that the transient detection has worked really, really well here. There's a transient for every single note in this clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on here. I'm gonna to go to slice the new MIDI track. And in this case, I'm gonna choose transient as the option I wanna do. So that's now gone through again, and it's made a MIDI channel with a drum rack on it, with all of our slices in it. And it's also made that MIDI clip ready to play it all back. Now I'm gonna mute this original clip and let's play the new one, see how that sounds soloed. Now this doesn't sound too great. If I click on one of these slices here, for example, we can see that we have the note within here, but at the very end of the sample, it's kind of, it's got a little bit of the start of the next one, which is what's causing the issues with that kind of clipping kind of sound. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with the sustain. I'm gonna turn the sustain right down and I'm gonna start playing around with the decay to actually uh, make sure that we get a nicer sound out of that. Almost kind of getting rid of some of that bottom, that the end of that sample. Just adding a little bit of release there as well. So that does sound better now. Let's unsolo that, to see how it sounds with the beats. So there you go, we got that working quite nicely now. Now it's time to get some of our swing on there, get some groove in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this MIDI clip 
And what I can do is I can now apply a groove to it. Just like any MIDI clip, we can apply a groove. Now, if you've not used these before, these are an amazing way to give your track some kind of swing. So I'm gonna click on the groove button here, which will open up my groove library. And I tend to use the MPC grooves quite a bit. Now, because these are 16th notes, I'm gonna to go to the MPC 16 presets. And on the right hand side of each one of these presets is the amount of swing. So it starts around about 53 there, goes all the way up to about 75. So it's really up to you, the kind of swing that you want on this. So this really dramatically changes the, uh, sat the swing of those notes as soon as you apply it. So I just need to double click on one of these and it'll apply it to that MIDI clip. As you can hear, there's quite a bit of a difference there. We've got the swing on there. So we've gone for the swing 70. If I go between this being on and off, it's just such a dramatic difference. Such an easy thing to do, but it gives a loop a whole different feel. And I'm really just scratching the surface with what you can do with this feature. And these tips are just ways that I use this feature in my tracks to reimagine different samples in different ways. I totally recommend playing around with it and seeing what you can come up with because it's just so amazing to play around with. And if this video has been useful to you, then definitely subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole load more tips, tricks, tutorials, loads of good content like this on my channel. So definitely get subscribed, hit that notification icon as well. So you're notified the moment I upload a brand new video and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.